Hey everyone, welcome back to What's In My Bag. Today I'm gonna to show you my X70. This is the bag I packed that I shot most of the material for our Kickstarter campaign. It's designed to fit our DV core unit series, but in this case, uh, I did a two week trip in Canada and I used the large DSLR core unit most of the time. Uh, the reason for that was Canada has recent drone laws that I need to have proper license to fly a drone there, so I didn't bring the drone. That was kind of the difference in my decision to go with the DSLR. So I'm gonna basically break this bag down. I'll just remove everything. It's already packed pretty much how I had it. Uh, some days, you know, I drove into places with, uh, you know, maybe an hour hike. Some days was a dirt bike for an hour, up the logging roads. Some days it was mountain biking. Some days it was uh, like three hours hiking. It was always different but I always had this on my back. It performs really well in, in a lot of different conditions and different terrain and different sports and all that kind of stuff. So let's get started with the outside of the bag. As you can see, I don't really have a lot uh, going on on the outside. I have, uh, I have my tent poles, so I put the poles in the side. Otherwise, this pocket's empty. As the day or night goes on, you know, this pocket might see some garbage getting thrown in there. On the other side, I've got a water bottle. So this is a one liter Nalgene bottle. I'll also pack uh, water tablets and pocket in here just, uh, just in case I do run out of water. Move to the inside. You get to see that I have headphones. Up next, I've got a sleeping mat. This is a Nemo sleeping mat inflatable. I've got a panel wrap kit that just has all my various accessories. You know, radios, uh, tripod collars. Uh, dongles, various charging cables, that kind of stuff. I have my tent, which is the black diamond uh, highlight. I think that's what it's called. Uh, now this is, generally I have a lunch bag that I, that I carry, but someone's taken it to work today and packed their lunch in it. So I'm just using this to represent that, but generally, you know, I'll have some chopsticks you know, some dry food. I usually have a bunch of nuts, I just don't have any handy right now. Jet boil kind of thing. And I'll just kind of keep that all in one area. I always want to keep the food stuff away from the other stuff. You know, these uh, accessory cases we make, they make a good lunch box too. And then we have the inner pockets, which uh, I've got a headlamp, some uh, snack food. I'll probably go into the mountains with more snack food than that, because I do tend to eat a lot of that stuff. Uh, I got my battery bank, which is an anchor. It's a bigger one. Uh, this thing is amazing. Uh, I've got my car keys here. They're always in safe spots. So that's empty. So let's move to the inside of the bag. Do a quick zip here. Let's just try and put it like this. Right away, I'll pull out the, uh, my sound wrap. This is the two panel wrap, variable ND, some electrical tape, some backup cables, dead cat on a lav mic, and a cable for my headphones to connect to the camera. Got my backup batteries all in my uh, accessory pouch. Uh, when I'm kind of running around, once I go find a base camp, put all my stuff down, I'll just put this onto my belt, just keep it handy. So I've got my Sony a7 III with, with this grip here. This is a really handy item to, to do video with. And honestly, when I take stills with the same camera, it's, it's actually really comfortable. It's, it's definitely more comfortable than the camera is without the grip. It's just, sometimes it just takes up too much space. So I'll set up my core unit to handle that on this trip because I was shooting with this camera pretty much set up like that all the time. Got more uh, ND filters, basically one for each lens. Uh, I got a blower here. I have ND filters for my uh, Osmo Pocket. So the 16 to 35, I use that for quite a few wide shots. The 70 to 200, pretty standard stuff. Uh, right here, I would have a backup body, which I'm filming on. And then in the pouch, I have my Radio Slave shutter triggers. So I'll use these if I'm doing kind of uh, selfie photos or something like that. Sometimes I'll meet up with people and, and they're not always up to a certain shot or they're out doing their own thing and uh, I'll just take pictures of myself. And these are made by Young Now, Young New, I'm not sure the pronunciation, but 
basically for Sony cameras. These are the only ones I found that do wireless shutter release from a good distance and in more complex terrain. Most of them have to have line of sight. These ones work most of the times without line of sight and I've sh done like shutter release with these from probably a good 100 meters away. I used to use Pocket Wizard, but when I switched to Sony, I couldn't find a way to trigger my Sony. So these are smaller. They work just as, pretty much just as good as Pocket Wizard. And they're also $35. So I'm just gonna close this back up. And before I get into the, the front pocket, I'm just gonna mention one thing is that I flew with this pack as carry-on, both uh, to Canada and back to Tokyo. I removed the belt just to keep it smaller and I packed that in my uh, luggage. Uh, I didn't have any issue flying with it carry-on. I don't suggest that you, you depend on this bag as carry-on compliant, but it was fine for me to fly with carry-on. I just uh, keep it small. Almost every time I check in when I know my bag is oversized, I'll just put it on one shoulder and I'll just kind of make it look like it's light and it's not stressful. Because when you're like all bundled up and it looks like you're about to climb a mountain but you're getting on an airplane, you might cause some suspicion in my opinion. Let's just flip this around to the front. And this pocket is, it's quite big. And a lot of people ask, you know, how does a large DSLR fit inside a uh, X70 or how does a, a mirrorless core unit fit inside an X50 because there's that extra space that, you're, that you now have. So basically, A, you have these compression straps which can always tighten it down. But anything you put in the front is gonna kind of, the wall that divides the main compartment and the front compartment, it's just gonna push out. It's just gonna push out and take up that space. So between that wall adjusting and the compression straps and stuff you put in this side, you're not gonna have an issue with things floating around too much. There might be a little play, but it's not gonna be a big issue. So in this front pocket, I do have a lot of stuff. So when I'm in the Alpine, I'll do like a layering system. And there's a couple of reasons I do this, but mostly it's most comfortable and I can constantly adjust to different temperatures. Because, uh, you know, when you're hiking around, suddenly you're really hot or you stop and take a photo, suddenly you're really cold or you're just, uh, you're sweating, you're not sweating, the sun's out, the sun's not. You know how it is in the Alpine, things can get, uh, can be temperamental. First thing I have is this hat, which is a, uh, I think the brand's called Sealy. Uh, this is actually a running brand and they make these really nice hats that just dry really quickly. So if you sweat, hair gets wet, it'll dry while it's on your head, it'll dry when it, you know you just put it down for whatever. But uh, it's just small, you know, you don't have to worry about it. And then I have a Teton Bros running jacket, which uh, is ultra light and thin. It actually packs into this little pocket here, basically gonna be about this big. This is really ideal because it's just a bonus layer and the amount of warmth that these little light jackets add and wind protection, it's, it's shocking how good they are. So even in the winter when I'm backcountry touring, I'll just throw this, if there's a light breeze, I'll throw this over a, a long drawn shirt and it's perfect for that. And then I have this layer which is, uh, it's got a little lining in the inside. It's water resistant, it's comfortable, the cut's perfect, you know, it, go, it goes up nice on the hood like this. It's just a nice high quality uh, pullover. And then last, I'll have an actual hard shell. So sometimes this is on the outside if it's super windy, sometimes I'll have this on top, sometimes I'll have the running layer on top. Like I'll just mix it up whatever the conditions are or maybe I just don't feel like stripping down layers. But having the three layers of jackets with just a long jaw shirt works really well for me. The other thing with having this is that if you look at these colors, I've got three, three photo options. So a lot of times I'll go out with people and they're wearing black. And black is just uh, it's a disappointing color to photograph. So you can always ask them to quickly throw a jacket on. I've got color choices, you know, some, some look better on different backgrounds. There you go, I've got three options. So next, uh, if we open the pocket a little more, we will see that I've got water tablets in here, 50 cents in Canadian change. And then I'll have my passport uh, in this pocket. And then you'll see that there's 
this main sleeve and a sub sleeve. Uh, in the sub sleeve, I have my sleeping bag. So sometimes, depending on the time of year and the temperatures and how my bag's packed, I will put either my tent or sleeping bag in here because when your tent is like this inside your bag, it can kind of limit the packing possibilities. Whereas if it's uh, like the sleeping bag is now, not in its stuff sack, it'll just fill every corner of the bag. Uh, it works really well for me. I suggest trying it. You know, most tents, sleeping bags, uh, sleeping mats, they're not sized to the width of the pack. You know, one of our design things is we size all of the accessory cases, the panel wraps, the core units, Everything that goes inside the bag is the width of the bag, so it uses maximum amount of volume. So it keeps everything very efficient when it's packed. You know, it's really easy to stuff it in. It uses the space more efficiently this way. And as you can see, a sleeping bag, three jackets, uh, a hat, and a couple of small things in the pocket. Like, that's a really good use of space for this, uh, for this pocket. That's my X70. This is uh, what I shot most of the marketing content with for our Kickstarter. I hope that's helpful. Actually, one more thing. I wear glasses. Unfortunately, I lost my prescription sunglasses at the bottom of a lake this summer. So I just have these in here now. If you wear glasses, you'll know it's a real pain to uh, have to deal with uh, glasses when you're hiking. Um, but this pocket here is really good to, to put my glasses in. And when I need to switch to my sunglasses, I can do that. Of course, on this side, I have my foam pocket. And now that is it. Thanks for watching the video. Hope it helped. Our Kickstarter is almost over. So if you're interested in these bags, now's the time to get on it. We'll see you next time.